You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, soap opera fans. We have a very special video for you today. We have daytime Emmy winner predictions for you. We're going to talk about who's going to get the trophies from GH and B&B and Y&R and also from Days. We have all the nominees. And more than just having the nominees, we've got information on what storylines they submitted and who we think, based on the storylines and scenes they submitted for their reels, that we think is going to win it. So, of course, the 50th annual daytime Emmys were delayed because of the actor strike and the writer strike, but now they are back on. They are airing in just a couple of weeks on Friday, December 15th from 9 to 11 Eastern. They are going to air on CBS primetime and will stream on Paramount Plus. Depending on your subscription package, if you got one package, you get to watch it live. If you have a different package, it's delayed and you can watch it the next day. So today we're going to talk about the nominee nominees, the storylines, and you know who we think is going to win in each category. There's a lot to cover, so I'm going to I'm gonna talk pretty fast, a little faster than usual, just to get through it all. If you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our soap updates. We're here talking soap seven days a week. And as always, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, agree or disagree. Maybe you have a different person you think is going to win in each category, because everybody wants to see their favorite actor or actress win, but everybody can't take home a trophy. There's no participation trophies at the daytime Emmys. So just before we dig in for a frame of reference, all the storylines that these nominations are based on were from the calendar year 2022. So January 1st through December 31st of last year. None of the action from this year, none of the action you're currently watching and exciting about. So it's almost a year back at this point. So that's important to know, to keep in mind how they earned these nominations. So just real quick, the best drama series nominees are all four of the soaps plus the web series, The Bay. This is the first year that The Bay is competing head to head with all the other soaps before it was in a special category and now it's right in the midst of the others i don't watch the bay I don't really know that much about it. I've, I've heard it's good, but I actually tried and I just, I didn't care for it. All right, we're going to start with lead actress. We've got Sharon Case, who plays Sharon Newman on Young and the Restless. And she didn't, she was nominated for scenes that had to do with her husband, Ray Rosales, suffering a heart attack while he was driving. He crashed his car. He died instantly. She did absolutely stellar work as a heartbroken, grieving widow. Also from Young and the Restless, we have Melissa Claire Egan, who plays Chelsea Lawson. People who watch YNR should recall that 2022 was when Chelsea hit rock bottom and considered killing herself. She was literally on a ledge about to end her life. It was very powerful work. It was very important work. Fanola Hughes plays Anna Devane on General Hospital. And the the thing that sticks out from last year most was the February 2020 scene was when she let her nephew, Peter August, die, who at one point she thought was her son. Rather than calling 911, she kept him company until the very bitter end. So he wouldn't die alone. She did a lot of solid work during the angsty end of his life. Uh, Jackie Wood from Bold and the Beautiful is also nominated. She plays Steffi Forster. And I am pretty certain that her Emmy reel, and we haven't seen them all yet, includes the scenes of where Sheila Carter shot both Steffi and her husband, Finn. And then they were finally reunited in Monaco in August of 2022 when she found out her husband was alive. She couldn't believe her eyes. It was incredible. Everybody was crying. It was great stuff. Also nominated from Young and the Restless is Michelle Stafford, who plays Phyllis Summers. Almost all of Phyllis's 2022 plotline was devoted to tormenting, resurrected Diane Jenkins and... Definitely, Michelle was authentically manic as a spiraling red, and it was good work, but was it good enough to win? You know, maybe not, because another YNR storyline was stronger in the end, in my opinion. So in out of all these nominations, I really think that it could be Missy Egan from Young and the Restless, who I think should win for her amazing work as Chelsea Lawson spiraling with a mental health struggle because it shined a light on suicide and mental health struggles, which is very important, especially in a year when we lost actor um, Billy Miller. 
who, of course, did play Billy Abbott on YNR and played Drew Kane for a while on General Hospital. So Missy Egan is my vote for this category. Let me know what you think below. Drop your comments on that. For lead actor, we've got Maurice Bernard, who plays Sonny Corinthos on General Hospital. In early 2022, Sonny Corinthos was off of his bipolar meds. He was spiraling and torn between two women. He finally got back on his meds and on an even keel, but it ruined his marriage. As always, powerful, powerful work from Maurice. Peter Bergman was nominated for his work as Jack Abbott on YNR. The work that Peter Bergman submitted was when resurrected Diane Jenkins came back into his life and he has some very hot tempered scenes with both Susan Walters as Diane and Michelle Stafford as Phyllis. It was good work and remember he's won four Emmys in the past. Billy Flynn from Days of Our Lives was nominated for his work as Chad Demera and he did really really good work. Uh, his really poignant scenes were when his wife Abigail Devereaux was murdered and died in his arms, including very dramatic scenes with their children at her grave. It, it was strong work. You could just feel Chad's heart breaking over the loss of his soulmate. Torsten K from Bold was nominated for his work as Ridge Forrester. The scenes on his reel are all about the fake CPS call that Thomas made using an app to fake Brooke's voice, including, you know, when Ridge and Taylor's wedding was interrupted and the tr ugly truth came out. Solid work, as always. Jason Thompson was nominated from YNR as Billy Abbott. And most of the scenes from Jason Thompson's Emmy Reel center on Billy Abbott saving Chelsea Lawson's life, literally talking her off a ledge. And actually, at one point, he joined her on the ledge and then talked her down when she wanted to end her life. It was poignant work. I would like to see Jason Thompson win lead actor to bookend Missy Egan, also winning, hopefully, for their incredible, insightful, and timely storyline on mental health and self-harm. Best Supporting Actress, uh, YNR didn't nominate anybody just right off the bat. Krista Allen was nominated from Bold for playing Taylor Hayes. Taylor had a very busy 2022 since her daughter almost died and she nearly got married. Her reel includes scenes with Torsten as Ridge where she talks to about losing him to Brooke and then she tells him to F off. It, it was fun work, but I, I don't know if it was really Emmy trophy worthy, but absolutely congrats on you know being nominated. This is Krista Allen's very first daytime Emmy nomination. Sonia Eddy played Epiphany Johnson on General Hospital. And this is a posthumous Emmy nomination. It's particularly sad because Sonia Eddy died suddenly due to a post-surgery complication in December of 2022. And in 2022, she was a nurse taking her MCATs on her journey towards medical school. And then she abruptly died. And then they also uh, wrote the character a death as well. Stacey Heideck was nominated for Days of Our Lives. She plays Kristen Demera, And she included scenes of herself as both Kristen and Kooky Susan Banks, her doppelganger. And this is her third daytime Emmy nom. Susan begged for a miracle to save her from Xander. And then as Kristen, she had scenes with Chad and Brady. You know, none of these stuck with me too much, to be honest, even though I watch it every single day. Brooke Kerr was nominated from General Hospital for her work as Portia Robinson. I have to be honest up front here. Brooke Kerr is an amazing actress, but I have a deep dislike of this character. She's a lying liar who can't stop lying. And in 2022, her scene centered on her romance with Curtis, who is amazing, And but she was telling more lies to him. This is her first nomination. And I just don't know if the work was strong enough. Kelly Tybod was nominated as Britt Westbourne from General Hospital. The Britch, as she's known, is now dead on GH. And Kelly Tybod did heartbreaking work in her send-off. Britt struggled with the progression of her degenerative illness, Huntington's disease. And she was at one point considering taking her life, but the hook killer killed her in early 2023. But her Emmy Reel centers on her illness and that struggle in 2022. I feel like of all of these supporting actress storylines this year, Kelly Tybod did the best work and should win it for her work as Brett on GH. But because of Sonia Eddy's tragic death and posthumous nomination, I feel like she could take the win instead. For supporting male actor, no nominees from either YNR or B&B. CBS just didn't even put any in. So we had Nicholas Chavez, who plays Spencer Cassidine on GH. Nicholas Chavez is a powerhouse young actor, and he took home a daytime Emmy last year in the younger performer category. This year he's in with the big boys and his reel is about Spencer's time in prison his daddy issues and finding out his father slept with his girlfriend all very soapy very solid work Chad Duell who plays Michael Corinthos on GH was also nominated Chad hasn't really talked about 
a lot about what scenes he submitted for this nomination, but 2022 was when Michael Corinthos found out his pregnant fiance had leukemia and all the fallout from that. He always does good work. Even when Michael is less than likable, he's a character that rubs me the wrong way a lot of times. Robert Gossett from GH was also nominated. He plays Marshall Ashford, and I, I just loved Robert on Major Crimes. He did top-notch work as Marshall. He had a health crisis, and he found out he had been misdiagnosed as a schizophrenic four decades ago, causing him to to abandon his children. It was really heartfelt work. And again, all the the light, shining the light on mental health issues, I think was just solid work done on a couple of the soaps this year. John Lindstrom from GH was also nominated for his work as both Kevin Collins and Ryan Chamberlain, his evil twin. And most of John's Emmy reel was him playing good twin Kevin or evil serial killer tri- twin Ryan in scenes with Avery Paul as Esme Prince, who of course was Ryan's wicked daughter. One of the best thing about John's work is that you actually forget it's the same actor playing these diametrically opposite men. He's always great to watch. Dan uh, Fioregal plays E.J. DeMera on Days. Dan is the only non-General Hospital nominee, so that's why I saved him for last instead of having him alphabetically. My one complaint about how Days uses the former star of Spartacus is that he's not shirtless enough. (laughs) All right, now to his actual acting work. EJ had a very busy 22. He was sent to prison for a crime he didn't commit. Then he got out, slept with his ex-wife's sister, and saw his sweet mother explode in a car. Super soapy, top-notch work. So I'm really torn on this supporting actor category because there was just so much good work. I think it'd be cool if Nicholas Chavez won, and so he'd have back-to-back wins in two different categories. But Robert Gossett's work was really strong in General Hospital. And of course, I love Dan as EJ last year year. So my money is on Robert Gossett, but maybe Chavez. We'll see. Best Younger Performer, Carrie Christopher, who plays Thomas DeMera on Days. Carrie is the youngest actor nominated at age eight, but he's been on Days for the past three years. His work as Thomas DeMera this year covered his grief over his mother Abigail's murder, along with finding a weird creeper in the house that they thought was the murderer, and he was calling the tooth fairy. It was very weird. And then he and his dad, Chad, struggled with their pain and grief. It was really good work for such a little guy, but he didn't have a ton of scenes. Not that that matters, he's, but he did strong work in the few scenes he was in. Eden McCoy from General Hospital plays Jocelyn Jack. She was nominated. Although she's 20 now, she was 18 at the beginning of 2022. So she just barely qualified for this category. And then she got in a fight with trolls on social media because they were belittling her for being nominated alongside two elementary school kids. Initially, Victoria Grace, who plays Wendy Shen on Days, was also nominated because there was some confusion because first the age was 25, then they dropped it to 21, and then they dropped it to 18. So her nomination was removed. Eden did great great work last year as the victim of revenge porn where a bad bad person videoed her first time with her boyfriend and spread it around campus it was very timely and compelling work also nominated in this category Henry Joseph Samiri who plays Douglas Forrester on Bold and the Beautiful Henry Samiri is always good in his scenes as little Douglas and this year his Emmy worthy work involved once again exposing his dad Thomas Forrester's bad deeds Douglas ruined his grandparents remarriage ceremony by revealing that his dad faked a CPS call to set up Brooke and that other people knew the lie it was always awesome work. So while I feel like Eden McCoy did great work, I'm I'm not certain that she'll win after the dust up about the age difference between her and the other two younger nominees. Of the two younger actors, Carrie Christopher's scenes were sadder, but there were a lot fewer. And Henry Samiri's always strong and had a lot more screen time. So I, I feel like Henry could win this. Guest performance nominees. Steve Burton was nominated not for Days of Our Lives, but for Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem, where he played Harris. Michaels. This is Steve's 10th Emmy nomination, and he has two wins behind him for both YNR and GH. This nomination was for the streaming series Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem, not the flagship show, which he is on now. So he played a brainwashed Navy SEAL out to steal a precious prism from Hope Brady. He was ordered to kill her on their wedding day. It was very solid work. I'm not really sure it was Emmy worthy, but it was definitely fun to watch. Love me some Steve Burton. 
something. Cassandra Creech was nominated for her work as Grace Buckingham on B&B. This is a character that not a lot of fans like. She's the ex-wife of baby-stealing Dr. Buckingham, played by Wayne Brady, who was awesome in that role, by the way. She was generally an unpleasant character with nothing nice to say, and her reel no doubt contains her harping on Carter about dating her daughter Paris. You know, I'm not sure it's trophy work, but a lot of times when you really dislike a character, that means the actress is doing solid work. You know, B&B wrote an unlikable character, and she played the role to the hilt. Allie Mills was nominated for her role as Heather Weber, a.k.a. the Hook Killer, on General Hospital. Allie as Heather may be one of my favorite soap recasts of all time. Heather is crazier than a bag of wet cats, and Allie played it to the hilt. Her recast was part of a retcon where they revealed that evil Esme Prince was the daughter of serial killers Heather and Ryan Chamberlain, and Allie killed it. No pun intended. Robert Newman was nominated as the now dead Ashlyn Locke on YNR. Newman was a recast replacing Richard Burgey in the role in early 2022, and he made devilish good work of that recast. Ashlyn faked cancer. He plotted against the Newmans. Then he turned darker, resulting in a life and death confrontation, which he lost. He's dead, but it was very solid work by Robert Newman, who's been on several soaps. People really like him. Kevin Spiritus was nominated for playing Craig Wesley on Days of Our Lives. Kevin Spiritus broke ground in 2022 because his character Craig had been living a lie for decades and finally came out as gay to his wife Nancy and his daughter Chloe Lane. And his dream wedding to his lover Leo Stark turned to dust because he found out that the little con man was already married to another guy. Despite Days' often campy plots, this was, this was groundbreaking territory and I think it was done very well. So I'm torn on this one. I think Kevin Spiritus' work of an older man finally coming to grips with his true sexual identity was incredible in terms of storyline, but I feel like Ali Mills' work as recast Heather was soapier and more entrancing, but I would cheer for either of them as the winner. Writing team and directing team nominees The Bay, Beyond Salem Chapter 2. Days basically scored two nominations, by the way, in the writing awards because they were nominated for Beyond Salem and also for Days, B&B, GH, and YNR. Everything was, everybody was nominated for writing. So for writing Writing, Days won last year, but YNR has won the most overall in this category. I feel like YNR or GH might do well this year because of their mental health storylines. I feel like YNR's was a little stronger. I will say I don't watch The Bay, so I cannot speak to their storylines. Pressed to choose, I would say YNR should win it because of the groundbreaking work on suicide, mental health, and raising awareness. For the directing team, General Hospital and YNR have won the most. 13 times each. And Days has only won once. GH has won the past three years running, and their momentum could definitely carry them through again, and I'd be okay with that. The Bay is competing head-to-head for the first time against the four main soaps. They could shake things up. And Days' digital spinoff is in the mix as well. However, it's super low budget, so I just can't see it taking the directing team award or, you know, best drama series. So don't forget at the Daytime Emmys this year, the legendary Susan. Susan Lucci, who played Erica Kane from All My Children, will be honored with a prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award. Of course, that doesn't make up for all the years she was nominated and didn't win, at least until her dry spell broke in 1999, which was her 19th nomination, if you don't remember. All right, that's it. Please click subscribe if you haven't already. Definitely drop your comments, whether you agree with my winner picks or you strongly disagree. Tell me why you think somebody else should win. I'm looking forward to it. We are here seven days a week talking soaps. I'm excited to see the Emmys in just a few weeks. And if you're listening to this on Thanksgiving Day when we published it, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy that turkey. Come back soon to talk soaps with me. This has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 